Okay, so it is the next morning after that video that I just put up about converting uh, files from the RAW that is coming out of the A7 IV to be able to use in Lightroom. Uh, we've got the coffee this time instead of the slushy. We've got the same shirt on though and we've got no pants on because we're in a time crunch at the moment to get this video done up. Uh, you know, before heading off to work, just because it seems like there is a little bit of confusion around it, and there may be a slight mistake that happened in that video that I put up last night. So, I'm just going to get a quick recording going of my screen, that way I can show you exactly what's going on. Okay, so this is the video that I put up last night, where it was going over a way that I found to be able to edit raw files coming out of the A7 Mark IV, which is what I am currently recording on now. Um, now, when I woke up this morning, I saw this comment here from Connor, who said that it did work for him, however, he didn't know whether or not it was making any difference besides, you know, shooting straight up JPEGs. Um, now, there is a good chance to this. I personally shoot a lot of video. I don't do photo as much anymore. I don't really, I, I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, and it's hard, it's hard for me to tell when colors are breaking down to be honest with you so i personally couldn't notice much of a difference or i couldn't notice any issues with it but because you know someone like connor who you know i've watched a couple of these videos after seeing his comment and he does know what he's talking about so i wanted to go back in there and see if i could find any solutions that sort of you know helped out with that and sort of got around that problem now i did end up finding that you can convert uh, these files from RAW into DNG using an online converter like this. However, I'm a little bit skeptical of using something like this simply for the fact that one, you have to do each file individually, you can't batch export, and two, I don't know of any way to actually find out what the bit depth is converting this way. So again, I'm currently editing on a MacBook Pro and even going into the actual, you know, information on a file, it tells me all the info about how it was shot, what it was shot on, when it was shot, all that sort of stuff, but I can't find anything about the color depth, the bit depth, or anything like that. So, what we're aiming for is a 16-bit file that can be read and edited in Lightroom, and I did end up finding a way to get that out of these new A7 Mark IV files. So, I'm gonna show you what I did for that, and again, sorry if you know, there was a bit of a mistake on that previous video from last night. And, you know, if you did have an issue with it, hopefully this fixes it up for you. Like I said, personally, I didn't notice that big of a difference um, between the two. So if there is a color bit difference, so be it. This way though, it is verified as 16 bit. So the solution that I actually found circles back to the main problem with all of this, which is Sony's own Imaging Edge software. I ended up scrolling across a dodgy looking Sony website that looked like it was from the 1980s um, and reading up on you know, just some forums and documents on it and ended up finding out that there is a little bit of, well I guess a workaround in a sense, built right into Sony's own Imaging Edge software. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull it up real quick on this screen. Okay, so this here is the original ARW file straight out of the A7 Mark IV. You can see down here, I've also got another one here. Um, and as you can see, you know, out of camera or in imaging and software, they're not the greatest photos. That's just the way that this program deals with them. I don't like imaging edge. However, at the moment, it seems to have given me a bit of a solution. So if you actually, it, and this is the other thing, it seems too simple, um, to be honest with you. But if you come up here um, to this little section here, it says output. If you click on that, okay, it straight up gives you the option to actually select a file format. It's defaulted, I think, to JPEG. However, you can click that, change it down to a TIFF file. And then right here, it actually gives you the option for your color depth. So you can tell it whether you want it to be 8-bit or you can choose whether you want it to be a full 16-bit file. So once you have done that, all you have to do is select the file that you want to export it to, click save. This will probably have a bit of a hissy fit at me because I've already got it saved there. I'm not going to override it because I've already got it opened up in Lightroom. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. 
And then jumping over into Lightroom now, I've got these files actually pulled up so I can show you what they look like. Okay, so this here is from the original method from that video that I put up last night. Uh, like I did mention in that video, I'm not sure whether or not, you know, what, what quality that it actually did export at. I'm fairly sure that that software that I was using that I showed you did export it at 8-bit. So I'll be completely transparent and honest with that. Um, however, Imaging Edge has said that it is exporting it at a 16-bit image. So I'm going to trust Sony's own software here and trust they know what they're doing with their own software. But this here is the, you know, 8-bit export, at least the suspected 8-bit export. Here is the one straight out of Imaging Edge, which comes in at a 16-bit, um, 16-bit image. So again, you know, I've got the same just light edit applied to both of them. And, you know, switching between the two, you can notice there is a slight difference, like the actual, I guess like the blacks and the shadows does sort of lighten up a little bit when you go to the 16-bit um, export straight out of Imaging Edge. However, I personally can't tell too much of a difference. And again, making this video and putting this video up wasn't so much to, I guess, you know, say that the original method that I showed the other night is completely pointless. It's just, I found a way to get 16 bit images and for people who really like them, you know, it's, it's there. And personally, you know, if I had the choice of doing 8-bit or 16-bit, I would choose 16-bit as well just for the safety's sake. So this is a way you can get it. Now, the one caveat to that or the one issue to that is I haven't found a good way to sort of batch import into uh, Imaging Edge. So I know that you can go up to here, go to the viewer, um, and then, you know, sort of like scroll through. Uh, head up here to the export tab, set it as TIFF file in 16-bit. Uh, I'm just going to set save to a file, you know, similar to where I had those original ones saved. I'm going to click save. You can see that it does a quick export. Um, it is reasonably quick as well, which is nice. Okay, so now you can go back to that original folder where you saved it to, open it up. There is the new image. can click and drag that one in. Import. Go back to develop. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to all photos because hopefully this should take me to the same one that I had. Uh, we can then go here, go back to it, paste the same edit to it, um, and then we can just sort of flick between the two. So, to be honest, is there a difference? Yes, there is a really subtle difference, like just in the way that it does look. Um, Gonna give them a little like close up so you can see like this one has a little more I guess like you know oranges to it and that sort of jazz. Are you able to push and pull it more? I'm not 100% sure, so please do not hate me for that. I just wanted to show you a quick way that I found to get 16 bit. At least that's what Sony is saying it is. So please, Connor, actually, I'm gonna drop you a, another comment um, on that comment that you left on me. So another reply to your comment. Uh, with a link to this updated video. I'll also pin an updated link in the uh, top of this, like just in the top comments of this video. So please, Connor, do me a favor, go over, check out this new way of doing the conversion to a 16-bit. You seem to have a lot more, I guess, you know, understanding and expertise around photos compared to me. Like I said, I'm a video guy predominantly, so please go push, pull, test these images out, do what you normally would do to it and let me know if this helped out with that problem you were having with the images breaking. Um, again, like the whole reason for me putting these videos up is because it's an issue that I was having and I just want to help other people who might be having a similar problem. So if this solution doesn't work or you still have issues with your images breaking in any way, let me know and I'll keep working on a solution. But this is a slight update to that problem that you were having. So, thank you very much for watching. Sorry for the confusion at all. I'm gonna get back to this coffee, edit this real quick before I have to head out. But thank you, thank you for your comment, by the way, Connor. Honestly, I appreciate you letting me know that you had a problem with it and that it didn't work completely for you. If everyone just, you know, says it's good or this, that, and the other, it doesn't really help me make things better. Um, another thing, I'm, whole, I'm you know, pretty new to this whole YouTube thing 
and didn't realize just how much I kind of wish they didn't remove that dislike button because again you know there was I think like, there is one person who has disliked that video um, and it's nice for other people watching to be able to see that because it shows them hey maybe this video isn't 100% what I'm looking for and it can help redirect them to an updated version of it so that's just a little side rant side tangent or whatever but Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope this helps you out a bit more. And uh, yeah, let me know how you go, Connor. Let me know how you, well you push and pull them. I'd love to see how your photos turn out. But uh, yeah, see you in the next one.